All right, so today I'm going to work on a mini map. And you can see this little mini map down here. There's my little red dot that's flashing. If we look over here, that's that yellow thing, right? Yellow thing right there. There's a pink thing right here. Pink thing. Let's run towards the pink thing and watch us update on the mini map. Pretty cool. Make sure we don't fall in. We're right underneath it. I thought that'd be pretty good. I'm going to split this video into two parts. I'm going to do both parts today. So it'll be available. One will be to get this overhead image, right? That we can use either on a mini map or maybe maps on in a lobby or something. So you could select it by looking at what you're, what you're going to go to. And then I'll do the next part of the video where we're actually hooking it up to the GUI and updating the dot to track the progress. So let's go ahead and get started with that. All right, so here I have a fresh world. I have the base plate chosen. This base plate is 2048 by 2048 on the X and the Z. I'm gonna make it a little smaller just so that make things easier for my map creation process. Let's go to workspace, base plate, and I'll change the size. What is that? 1024 by 16 by 1024. Cool. All right, and that's still pretty big. Let's go to our editor and make a terrain, right? Because terrains are tricky for something, for, for like viewports and stuff. So let's generate and I'll add some water here. I'm not going to put mountains. We'll do water, plains, maybe lava scape. That'd be cool. All right, cool. Let's go ahead and make that generate. I'm going to pause the video because this is going to take a while. All right, there we go. The generation's finished. Let's go ahead and go up. You can see the base plate's still there. I'm not going to delete the base plate because tracking user progress on the base plate is easier than doing it on the terrain. So let's keep it, but I'm going to make it invisible. I'm going to go transparency. I have base plate, base plate selected. One. Now it's gone. And then I'll turn can collide off. Can collide off. Cool. I got a nice little world. Ooh, I do have a little bit of lava escape in there. Let's go ahead and close this terrain editor. Let's look for our spawn location. That's the middle of the world. Hit, not scale, hit move. There we go. Let's pull that up. Oops, that was the red. Control Z. I need the green. There. All right. I'm going to make a focus part so we don't have to mess around with C-frames and stuff when we're doing our overhead shot of the world. So let's go ahead and get a part, pull it into view, and look at the Z here. If the Z is pointing to the right, I know that this is the front just from experience, but we can add a decal that will default to front just to prove it. There you go. All right, and then if you look at the decal, it'll have face. Oh, I moved it by accident. Front. There we go. All right, cool. We know where the front is. Let's delete the decal. Let's go ahead and rotate our part because we want it to point down. There. It's pointing down. So if we look at our orientation, it should be negative 90, 0, and 0. If you want your script to act like my script, so you can copy it uh, exactly. All right, so position, I want to center it in the world. Let's make the X on that focus part zero, and then make the Z zero. There we go, it's right over the, right over the spawn location. Let me name this focus. And let's make it invisible. I'm gonna keep it in the world in case I wanna take other photographs to update when I add stuff to my world. There we go. Transparency is one. Can collide off so we don't bump into it. And then anchored is true. Cool. All right, let's add a landmark. Just go ahead and put a, put a big block here. Maybe scale it out. So we have something to run to. And just move it down into the ground. And we'll make it something easy to see. Red's easy. Actually, I'm going to use my little character as a red. Let's make it yellow. There we go. Cool. Now, we got that. That's our ball, right? I'll call that ball. All right, let's go to 
starter player, starter character scripts, add a local script. This is going to be my picture script, right? This is how I'm going to take pictures. So I'll call it picture. Nice. Make this a little bigger so you can see it. Now, if you've done my start videos, you know I need to get a camera, right? So, uh, workspace, camera, current camera. Good. I need the user input service because I need to focus on the camera. I need to be able to move up and down, right? I'm in the center, so that should be good. We'll get service, user input service. I will get a variable for the camera for the Y axis, right? And then I want to turn off my chat windows and stuff like that because I don't want that interfering with my picture. So I'll say game starter GUI, set core GUI enabled, enum core GUI type all. And we'll set it to false. That'll turn everything off, like the chat window and things. Now, I need to make my camera scriptable. When the, when the game starts up, it might not be available right away. So I'm just going to do this little repeat loop. So I'm going to repeat camera, camera type equals enum camera type dot scriptable. We'll do a wait, maybe 0.2 seconds. And we're going to keep trying to update that camera type to scriptable until it is so we need to do our condition if camera type equals equals scriptable then we can break the loop right so this is assignment a single equals double equals is comparison we are just going to compare the camera type to see if it's scriptable and we're going to keep repeating until it is right so now let's get our camera c frame and match that up to the workspace focus part c frame and then we're going to say vector three new zero cam y and zero let's start cam y out at 500 all right a thousand is pretty high and we can move up to a thousand if we need all right now when we hit our keys we're going to do the w key to move in the s key to move back let's get our user input service we'll say input began connect function input right so whatever key we press is going to be in that input. We'll say if input key code equals equals enum key code w, then let's move in. So we'll say cam y will be minus equal. So the altitude will get less 50. That's it. That's all we need. Let's do for that if statement. Let's copy that. Control C, paste it. Control V. And now for S, we're going to move back. So this is going to be a plus equals, right? So it's going to take the, the current Y value. That's what that plus, plus equals means. And then whatever is on this side, we're either going to add to it or subtract to it, right? And after we do that, let's reset our camera. Copy that, Control C, go down here, Control V. Let's take a look. Hit play. It's going to take a little bit of time to um, get all set up, especially if you have like a really old computer like me, but we can start playing around with it. Let's try and move in. W moves in. Look, there's me running around, right? We're going to move back. I'm just going to pause this until everything catches up. There we go. Can we move in a little bit for this? What is that? S? Nope, S is away. W. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to chop off some of that mountain there because I want this to be a nice square. That way I can calculate out where I'm at on the mini map from a little red dot, right? If you make a kind of an unusual image with uh, unusual dimensions, you're going to have trouble with that. So I'm going to go down here in the search bar. You can do a SNIP. If you have Windows, you have the SNP tool. But Mac also has uh, a way of capturing screen. You might have to look that up. So it's like a command O or command shift O or something weird. All right, so we get that. Let's just go ahead and 
estimate where that corner would be. Right, the mountain gives it a little bit of distortion on the edges. That's pretty cool. I have a little bit extra up here. Let's just do it again. Let's move down a little bit lower. Uh, that's about as good as it's going to get. There we go. Cool. Let's save it off. All right. Downloads. Let's call this map two. I made a map earlier just for a dry run. Map two. Cool beans. Now let's go to our website, our Roblox website. I already have create selected. You might be, you know, here in your home tab or something. So just go over here to create. My, my Roblox is moving slow because it's Saturday. All right. And then go to decals. I already made a map, but I'm going to make them an, another one. Choose file. We'll say downloads map two. There we go. And upload. It'll take a little time before you'll be able to see it here, but it's going to show up in the work in the workspace right away in the toolbox. So let's take a look. Let's go over here. Let's turn our game off. We'll go to our base plate toolbox. And then under your images, there's my map too. I have several maps, right? I was playing around with it for a while. If you want to just test it out, we can just put it on this part, right? There's a decal right here. We can right click, copy asset ID, and just put it in there. Let's take a look. There you go. There's your little image. That's not too bad. You got a little grass in there, but that's fine. So in the next part, I am going to actually make the UI and have the little dot update uh, for our image.